Hi, it's Robin Beaumont here. We're going to be talking about the Cox Proportional Hazard Analysis model today in our third YouTube video concerning survival analysis. You can think of the Cox Proportional Hazards model as being equivalent to regression with survival curves. In the last two videos, we've been looking at survival functions and how they affect survival over time. We've done this by drawing the Kaplan-Meier graphs and then we actually carried out the log rank statistics to see if there was any significant difference between various curves. So we've been actually investigating survival, but survival you can think about is the happy side of the coin. It's also the flip side of the coin, which is hazard. Um, as survival rates go down, the hazard goes up. You've got a very high survival rate, you've got a very low hazard. So now we're going to be looking at the other side of the coin, looking at hazards rather than the survival function. So Cox regression, this is the equation that most people show you and it looks horrendous. All it's saying is that the hazard at a particular time is equal to some baseline hazard. And then we've got this funny little thing called EXP, which is just a magic number E. And it means if we take everything to the power of E, we get our expression that looks like a regression equation there that you're used to from ordinary linear regression. Each of those betas that we're used to in linear regression as well are, in this context, relative risks or hazard ratios. So we can work out the hazard ratio for a number of variables. In this context, we call them covariates. Just like in ordinary regression, we can think of measures for how well a data fit the model. And if you remember in the linear regression, we talked about the residual sum of squares. We have something analogous to that in Cox regression called the minus two log likelihood, the minus two log likelihood. And we just interpret that similar to the residual sum of squares. Smaller the value, the better the fit, larger the value, the less our data fit the model, the more unhappy we are. Similarly, we can think of these hazard ratios as being pivoted on the value 1. If they're lower than 1, they're advantageous, it's less than average hazard for that particular individual or covariate. And if they're more than 1, then they are a greater hazard than the average. We'll look at an example in a minute. So, we're saying these hazard ratios measure the hazard, in this context we're talking about death, for a unit change in the variable. Everything else staying constant, just like our betas in linear regression. So here's an example, taken from a paper in 1987, concerned with comparison of life expectancy for patients on continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis and renal transplants. Um, this is one of the earliest examples of a Cox model. Um, so what they did was take a large amount of data, I think about three, four hundred patients, and then they analysed these var independent variables, covariates we would call them in this context. So you'll notice here is our relative risk or hazard ratio. They actually call it something different in the original article, that's what it is. And notice that these values are above one, so they're adverse effect upon survival. But these values are below one, so they're beneficial. So here we have age has a hazard ratio of 1.68 per decade, whereas amyloidosis has a risk, relative risk of eight. However, if we look at the beneficial effect, we see here that male sex is half that of a female because this is an actual factor with two levels. So females would be classed as a hazard ratio of one and males would have a hazard ratio of just half that, 0.48. This also goes for these other variables as well. We're going to be using an example from ovarian cancer of trials that were carried out and it's taken in a book concerned solely with survival analysis by Colette, first written in 1994, and now it's a new edition out. So what we have is 26 subjects, and then we have time here, 
which I think is number of days. I'll check on that. Then we have uh, censored observations, those that survived and those that died. So the zeros are censored, so they're the ones that survived. The ones are the ones that died. And then we've got two groups here where they had a single type of therapy or combination chemotherapy, it was. But now we have a covariate, another independent variable that might affect survival, age in years. We want to know if this actually has an effect upon survival, as well as which treatment group they're in. Obviously, if we didn't have this age and we weren't worried about that, we could have just carried on as we did before. Done there two survival curves, which are on the right there, and then carried out a log rank or a Breslow statistic, which we've got there, um, to see if there was any statistically significant difference between them. And we can see they're both above the critical value of normally 0.05 so we'd say that they probably did come from the same population and therefore aren't statistically different. But we haven't considered this issue here of age so to do that we'd have to consider some type of regression analysis of course it will be the cost of proportional hazard model and here it is it'll look like this we'll have a proportional hazard model and here we've got the first beta which is treatment and the second beta which will be age. Here we are with the data in SPSS and we have the time variable here, the status variable, I call it sense here and if we click on the labels we can see which of those are dead and which are alive, censored and we have treatment, whether in monotherapy or combined therapy in the next column, and the age in the last. And the variables are just standard variables. I've made treatment a nominal variable there. So to carry out the analysis, we just go to Analyze, Survival, Cox Regression, Time is Time, Status is a Sense data, I call it. And we know one of those that have died, suffered the event. And we've got two covariates. If we had a covariate that had categories like treatment which were more than two, we could specify which one we wanted to be um, the reference group. Um, but we don't need to bother that. that. That's in the category box. Plots. We don't really need any plots. Options. We could ask for a confidence interval of our uh, betas. And that's it there. And we can click OK. And here's the results. So it tells us in total 46% died and 53% are still alive. There's minus two log likelihood. What we can think about is the residual sum of squares, and that's used to help compare the null model with the model with two parameters to see if there is any difference. And there is. You can see here that the change from that model this one, two parameters, was statistically significant. So our model is some use. Question is, which parameters are of use in our model? If we look here, we've got two parameters, treat and age. Treat, before we look at the values, we'll notice that the significance is 0.209. It's above our 0 0.05 critical value. so. We would drop treat from our analysis probably in the future. Rerun it without it. And then we've got age here, which is significant at the point zero zero one. Here we are in R. Load the R commander interface. Now, 
load the R commander plugin survival. And it warns us that it will close down commander and open it up again. Fine. Now import our data that we used in SPSS. Call it my data frame. We don't want to use the value labels as factor levels to so get that off. Okay, find the file and use it. Check we have our data. There we are, fine. Now I simply go to statistics fit models, Cox regression, statistics, fit models, Cox regression model. Click on there, call the model something, Robin1, time, variable is time, event indicator is sense, and then we've got two covariates here, age, and treatment level. We want to be plus beside in between them, so we press plus and they automatically put them in. Press OK. And there are our results straight away. That's the R code that created. There's the age covariate. Notice it's high significant 0 0.001 as before, same as SPSSS and treatment which is insignificant so we probably could drop it and there are the 95 percent confidence intervals in my handout there's lots more details about how to interpret the output from the cox regression um, you can also use the cox regression um, coefficient values just like you could in um, ordinary regression to work out individual hazard rates so here's an example of a 30-year-old receiving monotherapy. There, relative hazard is 3.77. If you look further down, you can see for a 60-year-old, having combined therapy, the hazard is 4.2. And you can also convert the hazard rates, because they're odds ratios, into probabilities. I hope you find this very brief introduction useful. There is an excellent freely available article written by Chen in 19, 2004 um, giving a much more detailed analysis in SPSSS concerned with breast cancer data. You can find it there.